Okay, team, we have another phoneme isolation question. And I try to choose these questions um, to see how they could be used. This one's involving an English language learner and you get a, another type of question mixed in, a scenario involving English language learner and phonemic awareness. So it's really good practice because you will have questions like this. This is one from that new Science of Teaching reading test in Texas, the 293. Great one to study, team. Um, what I want you to do, since you can see it's a little bit longer, I want you to take two minutes and I want you to read it over at your own pace. So you can pause me now, and when you're ready to start up again, unpause. Okay, pause me now. Unpause. All right, so you've read it. I think you can see it's longer. These new questions have that length. They're wordier. They have a, a, a greater linguistic complexity. I mean, the questions are longer, right? The answers are longer. It takes time to read it. Now, there's teachers in this class that read really fast. So they will have no problem reading this in two minutes. And then there are teachers that are like, what, Chris, this takes me time. So every question that we do, we're practicing our pacing whether you do it in two minutes or three minutes or four minutes or one minute, doesn't matter. Every question, you have an opportunity to, to start, pause me and practice pacing. And guess what? If you practice it a hundred times, you're going to get a little, you're going to get better. You're going to get faster. So that's all we're doing. Now you've read it. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, what's the first thing we're always going to pick up on? Well, maybe we pick up on the grade. And a regular question, that would be the first thing. Pre-kindergarten, three to four, maybe four to five. Okay, the student is pretty young, right? So I'm just going to say here, this teacher is working with a bunch of four-year-olds. Is that fair? That way they fall into both groups. And this teacher is preparing an introductory lesson focusing on isolating and identifying initial sounds in spoken words. Okay, that is a phonemic awareness activity, right? We have... Um, we have those levels of phonemic awareness and, and uh, uh, phoneme isolation. I'll just do phoneme isolation here. That's sort of that first one. Yes, involving phonemic awareness. Okay, and then it says here uh, for a small group of children whose informal assessment, another assessment question, indicates that they are already, they are ready to learn this skill. So this group of kids, they're ready to learn phonemic awareness. Okay, now, that would be like a standard question. But then they throw something else in. What else could they throw in? Okay, well, they're going to add that the group includes a lot of, uh, has some English language learners. Okay. So they're kind of throwing this one in there. They're adding it in. So now this becomes a question that could be a phonemic awareness question. It could be an assessment question. It also could be uh, an ELL question, right? So we can see how this could fall into uh, those different categories. Okay, so it says here, the group includes an, an English language learner. Which of the following instructional supports would best promote that English language learner's success in achieving the instructional goal of the lesson? Well, what's the goal? The goal is to work with phonemic awareness, right? And um, whenever you see this, I think what this is um, alluding to is that when we're learning a second language, second language acquisition, language one and second language acquisition um, can have a different set of phonemes than language two, whatever language two is. And so what that means is like, let's say you're coming from, um, let's say uh, you're coming in and you speak uh, another language, okay? You speak another language, some other language. I'm gonna use Spanish. Let's say you, you speak Spanish, okay? Uh, Spanish is going to be similar to English. Um, there, there are a lot of similarities, but there are going to be some differences in those phonemes. And there may be some phonemes in language too, okay, let's say that's English here, um, that are different than language one. Yes, would you agree? And so whenever we go from language one to language two, and we're going to practice phonemic awareness, which is hearing and identifying specific sounds in, in, in English, we need to know the sounds in English, the specific, and especially sounds that might not exist in language one. Does that make sense? 
And so if we're going to have the student is going to have success um, in, in this activity, the teacher A needs to review and with that student that the unique sounds in the English language or B, they need to choose words where the phonemes uh, match up from language one to language two. They want to choose words where where the phonemes are going to line up. OK, so let's look at these ones right here. You read these over. It says here the answer is A. So read that to yourself one more time. Read that to yourself. So we're selecting words to use in the lesson, and the sounds are going to be common in both language two, English, and language one, the home language. Now, if you're an ELL teacher or whatever classroom teacher you are, you've seen that scenario before, right? You've seen that that can be an issue. Sounds from language one don't always match up to, to sounds in language two, yes? And so if you're going to do an activity involving hearing sounds um, in English, and you have a student that, that is learning English as a second language, you gotta make sure A, you, you help them with any gaps in, lang in, in sounds, phonemes from language one to language two, or B, you, you choose words that are gonna have where, where you know they're going to be common overlapping sounds, right? So the answer here is A. This is a great question. And what's also nice about this question is not only is it a great question, but it also comes with a wonderful write-up. And I would encourage you to go to these exams, especially the ones like this one right here, that have a good write-up and read these over because basically what they're doing is they're telling you the information that they want you to know for these exams. Now, this one is for uh, the Texas exams for the science of teacher reading, but it's still a great one to review. Great, great, lots of great ideas. We can't do it because uh, you need to read it to, to actually 